Hey everyone, back again for part two of the palm oil in soap making video series. If you didn't see the first video on this, which was all a nice big in-depth chat about palm oil, the issues around it, you know, education to help us decide whether or not we want to or not use it in soap making, because there might be reasons why each of us choose to use it or not to use it. And, you know, I res totally respect individual choices about that. But this part two of the video is the practical side of things. And I'm just going to quickly show you how to prepare your palm oil. If you buy it in bulk like this, how to prepare it and get it ready and store it so that it's ready to go for when you do want to use it in your soap recipes. The last time, well, the only other time that I ever bought palm oil for soap making, I bought four kilograms of it. And what I did was I heated it up and I divided it into four containers. And then whenever I needed it, I just melted the oil in each individual container before I used it. Why do you need to do that? The reason is, is that palm oil is a semi-solid oil fat that's very high in saturated fats. Um, and when it's melted, it homogenizes and you can stir it and all of the different fatty acids within the palm oil that make up palm oil, just naturally the natural variety of fatty acids in there, as they solidify, some solidify faster than others. And so you can get a bit of separation. So if you just put this whole big bucket into a pot like this and melted it and then let it go solid again, the fatty acids in your palm oil would be different at the bottom than they would be at the top, which you don't want. You want them to be blended thoroughly and properly for your soap making. So it doesn't help to have a big bucket of palm oil when you want to make a small soap recipe with just a small amount. You need to have it ready and pre-mixed to go. Basically, what you want to do is you want to melt the whole lot all together at once so that you know that it's fully homogenized. And this time, instead of putting it into, you know, one liter containers that I then had to melt each time I wanted to make my soap, what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna pour it all into individual soap molds. I've got a whole lot here. These are my two containers of my silicon molds. I've got quite a collection. This one's got tons in it, <laughs> showing all my stuff here. So I've got quite a collection of silicon soap molds. I've got some big log molds there, but what I'm going to use is all of these individual ones. I'm going to melt the palm oil and then I'm going to pour it into all of these molds until it's all used up. I'm going to make sure I stir it before I pour it in. And then I'm going to let it solidify into these individual molds and then pop it back out and put it in this bucket so that every time then when I want to get some palm oil for a soap recipe, I can just pull out the individual bits and I know that they will be properly homogenized and have the correct mixture of fatty acids. So I've got my stock pot here. I don't know if it's going to hold the whole amount. I think it might do, but we'll just um, melt it down and then see if I can fit it all in. And if not, I might have to do it in two batches. Oh, it's a bit soft. I need some help with this. Oof. Get, get in there. Wow, it's amazing creamy color. Palm oil naturally from the, the fruit of the palm, the oil palm, is a red color. But most palm oil that you buy from soap making suppliers is uh, refined and they take the color out of it and uh, take the any odor out of it as well. I'll keep going with that. I'm going to fill this right up. This is a massive big bucket. All right, I'm going to put this on my stove, melt it down very gently, and, um, and then we'll put it out into the, to the individual molds. I'm just going to put this on reasonably low heat. I don't want to overdo it, and it's probably going to take a while to melt down. And I'll come back once it's melted. It's only been a few minutes and it's melting really quite, quite quickly and really well. So I'm going to see if I can get the rest of the bucket in there now. Well, not the bucket, but the rest of the oil.
your palm oil is all melted now you don't need to overheat it just melt it till it's melted <laughs> just on low heat and then make sure you stir it really thoroughly and I decided I will fill up my small containers as well as do some individual molds because these are quite easy to take out you know some just all the way from the top to the bottom just using my ladle it's a bit of a slow process but not difficult to do you could use a, a jug if you want um, this is oil and you've got to clean it all up so I find using a ladle the neatest cleanest kind of way just stir it as you go Stirring it as you go is really important to keep the fat really well blended. That was much easier. <laughs> and then when I need some this, I'll be able to just cut off what I need. As long as what I'm taking it goes from the top all the way to the bottom of the mold, then I will get the correct blend of fatty acids from the palm oil. Well, the palm oil is well and truly set now. It's actually quite a while since I poured these into the molds and I just did pop these into the fridge just briefly to firm them up a little bit more. In summertime, this will be really soft. So put it in the fridge or the freezer for half an hour before you unmold it if you want to, to make it easier. These are the three containers that I just poured into. And I'm actually thinking that my first idea, which is this is what I did with the first round of palm oil I had. That actually works really well because then you can just store them like that, take out what you need. I might just leave these at room temperature and I'll use these first. Um, and these, I think I'm actually going to store in the freezer because over summertime, if it gets above 35 degrees Celsius, which it may do at some point, these are going to get really soft. So I, I think I'm going to put them in my, my chest freezer. And I'm just going to pop these out. They should come out really easily because they're just oil. Pop these big ones out of my loaf molds. I should have done that first. <clears throat> I'm just going to neatly pack these into this bag. Oh, it's so sticky. And I'm going to keep this in the freezer. And when I need some, I'm just going to cut off what I need. Like I said, in retrospect, I think using small containers like that is probably a better idea. But um, sometimes in my videos, I'm just exploring new things. So I hope you don't mind me showing some methods um, that I would use and some that I wouldn't. It's just the way it goes. Um, a lot of the times with these things we <clears throat> we learn as we go along and a lot of my videos I'm usually fairly prepared for but sometimes I like to just try things out as I'm recording it too because I won't be getting any more palm oil anytime soon that's it Ooh, so greasy lucky I've got plenty of good soap to wash up those molds with <laughs> um, and that's it I'm going to store that bag in the freezer. I will label it. I'll just write palm oil 2023. I'll know what it is and um, I can take these out and cut bits off or melt them and use them as I need to. And I've got these three that I'll store at room temperature. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and don't forget to check out part one if you want to hear all the ins and outs about palm oil and what is really important to consider when you're deciding whether or not you want to use it in your soap making. Thanks so much everyone. If you'd love to come and join me in the membership community where there are no bugs because it's all online. <laughs>
come and see me. Come and check us out at www.buymeacoffee.com slash Ellie's Every Day. You can see the membership group option there. Come along if you can. See you again soon. Bye.